Hey guys, welcome back to the Bay Podcast. This is your host, Lashana, aka Miss West Creative Coach. And for season four, it is all about mindset. I'm super excited to have my first guest of the season, the Jasmine Hall, aka the Worth Coach. Jasmine, I'm going to have you introduce yourself to everybody and we'll jump right in. Awesome. Thank you, Lashana, for having me. It is a pleasure to be on your podcast. My name is Jasmine Hall, better known as The Worth Coach, where I help single women who desire to become wives, discover their self-worth, live within their financial worth, and build their net worth. Yes, I love that. So Jasmine, I want to just say thank you for coming on. You're my first guest of the new year, 2022. And I chose you to be my first guest because of the work that you do with worth, right? So your name is The Worth Coach, and I know you introduced yourself, but tell us, like, why did you get into the area in the arena of specializing in worth, and what does that really mean if we kind of boiled it down? Awesome. So when it came to worth, I'm going to be honest, a lot of us as entrepreneurs, we stumble into our area of expertise, Mm -hmm. and it's oftentimes because of things we've gone through. And from my background, I'm actually a single mother. And I have been a single mother most of my children's lives. And one of the things that I struggled with was my worth. And when I say worth, my financial worth, building and saving money, investing money, growing something for my for myself and my children, as well as my self-worth. I think when my children were younger, I probably struggled with my self-worth and my financial worth the most. Um, A little short story, I'm trying to make it short, but my background was, you know, I attempted to become a teacher. That was my lifelong dream to become a teacher since I was like four years old. And up until this point, anything I put my mind to, I did it, I killed it, I was good. But there was this one time when I was attempting to become a teacher, left my job, was accepted into a program, and things just didn't go as planned. I had to take a, a interest exam called the Praxis, and I missed the math portion by, I think I took it three times, and I missed it by two to three points every time. And because of this, I was not able to become a teacher. But on the flip side of that, this was right when the recession hit. So this situation left me with one child, um, unemployed, and in this time period of three years, I was unemployed, with, with, ended up with two children at the time for three years, and I was at my all-time low. And it wasn't until I just was like, look, there's nothing else I can do, but it discouraged me to the point that I didn't even want to pursue becoming a teacher after that. Mm. You know, people kept telling me, why don't you try, why don't you try? I was like, nope, I'm not doing it. You know, and it wasn't until I took an action my best friend, you know, she kept trying to, she was a teacher at the time, kept kept nagging at me. And that's how I felt, honestly. I'm like, why you keep bugging me? I don't want, because I was really, really stubborn at this time. Yeah. And so when she said that, I was like, okay, look, I'll just do it just to kind of shut her mouth. She'll probably hear this later. But so just to get her out, you know, out of my head. And I applied to a program to work on my teaching certification. And at the same time, and this was all in July 2011, at the same time, I went ahead and tackled my finances. I was tired of the bill collectors calling me, blowing up my phone, sending me letters because they found out where I lived. Yeah. And I just started to do some little little things. And within a a month, less than a month, I ended up getting becoming a teacher, moved my, my children up to Atlanta, didn't know how I was going to do it. But it was nothing but God, faith, and trust in myself and in and, and God yeah. that got me here. And now I have been teaching for 11 years. Wow. And in that, you know, I've built my self-worth, my net worth, and my financial worth. Wow. Thank you for sharing that. So it sounds like there was something that happened, some kind of catalyst, something that said, you know what, something has to work and we're no longer just going to just be. We need to become. So what was it that thing that just kind of clicked for you to where you said you know what it's go time we this has to work 
So for me, I would say it was two two situations. Mm -hmm. The first situation was I had to leave my environment. I had to leave my comfort zone. And that was leaving Indiana, where I'm originally from. And I had been there all my life. My children were born there. And I remember my sister telling me, you know, because when my children's father and I had talked about it, because he's from Georgia, I, it was really just an afterthought. I was like, well, maybe I should move to Georgia. And because at the time he was pursuing his uh, dream of becoming an ath a professional athlete. Mm -hmm. And so my sister told me, I don't care if I have to drive you to Georgia myself, you're getting out of here. And mm -hmm. that was the turn, one of the turning points because I could have easily stayed there yeah. and, and stayed in my comfort zone. But I'm grateful for that because it's, that was catapulted to me to this situation now. And then the second thing was my friend, like I said, staying on me about pursuing my goals, being a teacher, because like I said, I had gave, I have given up, didn't want anything to do with teaching. You know, I, I had the mindset that it was not meant for me to teach just let it go and with doing that you know i i just applied i love to learn i you know love going to school i actually had a, a master's at the time so i was like why not i'm not doing anything else why not go back to school at least right. i could get some money from it you know and when i did that i said okay well why not let's go ahead and get these bills out the way you know and and i just had to change my mindset and mm -hmm. around everything and like I said, like clockwork, it just started, the Perfect. wheel started turning and I'm here before you now. Amazing. So I heard a few things. And when I think about mindset, environment, people, places, things, what you're listening to, what you are letting in impacts what you put out. And this is the mindset mantra series. And the reason why I chose it is because in this new season, because I'm not necessarily saying in this new year in this new season, there's something that is trending and something that is literally infusing mindset, mental health, wellness, worth, something that is like, it's just, it's going and going. Like, for example, when I first started entrepreneurship about three or four years ago, mindset, yeah, everybody was talking about it, mental health, yeah. But now it's this just this strong thing of self-care, self-love, self-worth, mental health, mindset. And so... I guess my question, why do you think now it is literally kind of trending, bubbling at the forefront? Because we all know that it, it always should have been. But mm -hmm. what do you think is making it to be so apparent now? It's funny you ask this because I was thinking this myself. Like, mm -hmm. why is all this stuff happening now? And I like to say it's part of us as millennials we're shifting things, we're changing things up, you know, and, and every generation has done this, you know, I don't right. care if it was baby boomers, the gen, I think X, X, <laughs> they, we've all shifted somehow, but for us, we, I know, I remember myself when I was a young child thinking I didn't want to do the same things that my parents did, mm -hmm. my, my relatives did. We're at an age we know that if we continue doing things the same way, we're going to get the same results. Amen. So we're speaking out, we're acting out, not in a bad way, but it's pushing us. You know, mm. I, I like, you know, I've, we've been hearing this term, the great re recession or not recession, the great resignation, right. you know, and a lot of us millennials are leaving our jobs, but it's all because we see something bigger. This pandemic, right. we were doing things how we normally did. We went to college, you know, because most of our parents didn't go to college. So right. we were the generation that went to college. But some of us are realizing, what did that really get us? Debt, the situation the same. We wanted something different. And now we are seeing that the, the doors are opening and allowing us to do whatever we please. Whatever we put our mind to, it comes back to us tenfold. Yes. No, I think you're definitely on to something. Um... We are shifting things. And the beauty of it is our kids are watching us. My daughter, 19, she's an entrepreneur, right? I know your kids are doing some entrepreneurial things. They're seeing a different example. We've seen the examples that we've seen. Mm -hmm. And so I just think that is so cool. And I think that's why it's so important for us to 
go for our dreams, go for our passions, never give up, just do it like Nike. But it's not that easy as we're talking about either. No, ma'am. Like, it's hard out here. Yes. One thing that I always say is we need to remember what we've already been able to overcome. Like the story that you shared, you know, being a single parent, having degrees and and then having to take care of two kids by yourself and aspiring to be a teacher and, and it didn't happen, but you kept pushing. And so right now in your entrepreneurial journey, I want us and we can both kind of talk about the things we've had to overcome, but we still didn't give up. We still didn't throw in a towel and we're still pushing, but it's not easy because I don't, I will never tell someone, yeah, go quit your job. (laughs) Yeah. I will say if you want to quit your job, map out a plan, work your plan and assess it to see if it works. Right. Because if I would have just said, oh, I'm quitting my job, adios amigos, I probably would be back on LinkedIn applying because I didn't have a plan. Mm -hmm. And so I could share first in regards to some things that have been very challenging in entrepreneurship, but I didn't give up. So in my coaching program, we were just talking um, yesterday about you post these awesome things you've been working on, you launch a program, you have a masterclass and crickets nobody shows up and starting off that was me and how I overcame that in my mind my mindset shift was someone's going to see this and it is for somebody and no matter how many people show up I'm going to give it all I got 1000 percent and because of my perseverance and my reframe instead of well ain't nobody showing up this is a waste of time I'm in the gym, I'm practicing, I'm perfecting my craft, I'm getting better and better. And when I get that knock on the door, that tap on the shoulder, I'm going to be ready instead of me having to say, oh no, I don't know what to do. Oh, I know what to do because I've been practicing whether it was one person viewing or a thousand person people viewing. And so that perseverance has enabled me to leave my nine to five, um, push my business to the next level and, and support other entrepreneurs to do the same. So is there something that you've been pushing through it hasn't been easy but you haven't given up and you have seen results from it yes ma'am so for me it would be just starting my journey as as an entrepreneur as an entrepreneur for myself because i'll say this i have done different entrepreneur you know experiences since my children were born before they were born actually Mm -hmm. but i'm a firm believer that everything happens on time and you know I actually received my certification become a life coach back in 2018 I'm actually just now in 2022 really actively pursuing it Mm -hmm. but it wasn't my time and I had to realize that it wasn't until I started to focus on me and my worth and creating my brand behind the worth that I realized everything happens at a season you know when you started your business may not be my time to start my business I love what it's you know doing for you but it may not be my time and I think a lot of us get so rushed and oh I want to be like this I want to do this too but it's not your time and sometimes we have to sit in that moment and figure that out and so once I did that and you know you know I got to give you your flowers you know I was a part of ALD probably over what's a year and a half yeah and i i knew at the time i was ready but it was it wasn't just about me starting the business i had to deal with some other things i had to heal mm-hmm. i had to learn about me and that's when things started to click is when i figured out jasmine matters jasmine worth matters you know, like how you said, you're going to show up whether it's one or two or however many people show up, you're still going to show up a thousand percent. I had to get to the point where I had to show up for me. Amen. Regardless, is I don't care if nobody shows up, Jasmine's still going to do it. Mm-hmm. And I could, you know, before I started AOD, I just wouldn't do it because I'm like, I don't want to, I'm so worried about what people think. But now, nah, no. if I got to talk to myself on live, that's fine. Because right. guess what? I'm going to pat myself on the back. I showed up. Mm -hmm. If somebody, when it's time, when it's their season, they're going to see me. Amen. No, that's so dope. And I appreciate you. And let me just say, 
you have been such a blessing to work with because I always say that coaches get the double dip. (laughs) (laughs) We learn, we grow as we are serving. And one of my other clients, uh, Jess, said it yesterday on the mastermind that you guys did, healing while building. That's literally what this journey is about, in my opinion, because you don't have a supervisor checking in on you. You don't have a weekly team meeting to to do checks and balances. You don't have an HR. You don't have uh, a team morale booster that you can go and tap into and do icebreakers. We don't have any of that. But one thing that we do have is our transferable skills and abilities and our grit, our grind, and our heart to to manifest and create things out of our head into a masterpiece. And I think that is so cool, but we are all on the journey of healing, no Mm -hmm. matter if it's on a lower level, moderate level, or freaking high level, right? But I think we have to be aware because some of that can spill over into the work that we do. And that's why some people don't want to go live. They're worried about how they look. Oh, I have a pimple here or I have a gap or Mm -hmm. my jaw is crooked, right? You guys will get that story on on another day. And so I'm just so honored that you said yes to Jasmine. Yes. Because by you saying yes to Jasmine, so many other women are going to hear and see your story and say yes to themselves. Yes. Um, yes. And so with the new name, the worth coach, like what kind of woman are you looking to serve? Like who paint the picture of what that woman looks like? Cause she may be watching right now. And I want to make sure that they have a clear picture of what kind of work you're doing. Who's a good fit for your program. So the type of woman that would value and benefit from my program worth university is someone who has not said yes to themselves Mm -hmm. and i'm glad that you pointed that out because we're not raised to do that we're raised to do for everybody else you know a lot of you know some of us are mothers so when we become mothers we're raised you know we transition to do for our children or for wives, we're trans, you know, we trans, you know, form to do that for our husband or our job. It's always somebody else. So I'm, Worth University was created to help this woman take their worth to the next level. And it's not about anybody else. It's not about our children. It's not about our job. It's not about our boyfriend, girlfriend, whoever you, you know, whatever you relate to. It's not about nobody else. It's about you. And, you know, again, it, it took me going through what I went through to see that. And so with this journey, I create this program. And I'm be honest, I'm doing it as we go. Mm-hmm. And I like that because the people who join this program, they have an opportunity to build with me. Yeah. You know, I don't want to create it for you. I want to create it with you. And so we're starting with the basics we're starting with our mindset because you know what i've learned from my experience with you and just my life mindset sets the tone for everything and so we start with mindset and it wasn't until i for myself realized how much my past heal you know my past trauma was affecting me yeah and i realized how much my healing that's when my business really formed and transitioned is when i took the time to heal Everybody's healing story is going to look different. So this woman, like I said, she's ready to say yes to herself. She's ready to shift her mindset. She's ready to heal. And she's ready to evolve into the woman she's deserve, She's deserving to become. Oh, I love that. I love that so much. Um, well, guys, make sure that you guys tap in. I'll definitely have Jasmine share her information before we wrap up. But what I want to do is shift the conversation a little bit because this is the mindset mantra series. So what is your mindset mantra in this new season? Like, what are the words that you're using? What are the things that you're doing? How are you infusing the self-worth, the mindset and everything into this new season? So you can make sure, as I call it, stay on the horse. What does that look like for you? And then I'll share as well. So... 
for me in this season, some of the terminology I'm using is worth blockages. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to mindset, one of the worth blockages is having an unworthable mindset. And yes, I made that up. <laughs> and that one mirrors a scarcity mindset or a negative mindset. So you're doubting yourself. You're doubting life. You're doubting so many things. You lack the belief that things are possible. And so to offset that, once you first, I believe, you know, I have the DBAT method, which is you got to define, you got to know where you are. If you know you have a negative or unworthable mindset, you got to address it. Why do you have it? And again, it goes back to the healing. So once you shift from that unworthable mindset, you shift to a worthable mindset where you believe and you are receiving and you're seeking the things you deserve and you, you want to have in your life. And so those are some of the words that I attribute to my brand and, and you know, my vision. And even, like I said, this is a, I'm a work in progress. We all are. I don't care if you've been in business for one year or 10 years or 20 years, mm -hmm. we're all a work in progress. And so for me, there are days when I have to check my mindset and say, Jasmine, that's unworthable. You need to work towards having a worthable and it's okay to still have that unworthable mindset but again it's all about developing it's all about defining and tweaking until you figure it out because for some reason there's something that's triggering you to have that mindset and yes. begin with and that's where you got to address it yes and i'm telling you i think that's what people miss is getting to the root cause of what's triggering they breeze over it and they try to keep moving but it resurfaces mm -hmm. right um, so for me, the word is unthinkable. Like literally I work with my clients and anybody I come and encounter with to do the unthinkable. We think in our mind, oh, that's not possible. Yes, it is. Oh, no one will buy that. Yes, they will. It's just about positioning. It's just about strategizing. And once we realize that we get more confident, we get more clear, we have more, um, faith and trust and courage and then it's a domino effect yes. like even just sitting here listening to you talk about your framework your program I see fire I see grit I see grind because you are certain you're not thinking about doing it you've already done it and you're in pursuit and so with the word unthinkable it just helps me to just stretch and not be afraid of anything like okay you want to you want to launch a, a dog walking service? Let's make it the number one dog walking service in the universe. You want to launch a cookie company? What's special about your cookie company? Why should I go there before I go to the one around the corner? So it's really answering those questions and being creative and getting back to our creative childlike ways. Yeah. When we were younger, we'd be playing with Play-Doh. We have a hula hoop acting like we we had a big old whistle in our tell us whatever, nothing. Whatever. Couldn't tell us anything. Be whatever I say it's gonna be. Okay. Period. And so that is what I want us to do is get back to our childlike ways, have fun while doing it, and give ourselves grace. You just said the people who join this, it is being built as we go. They get to be a part of that. That's exciting. Yes. I don't want to go anywhere where everything is established and I just got to do the rhythm of row and go, no, let me have some input. And so that right there is a reframe. Mm -hmm. It should help motivate someone to be like, you're right. Let me start something new. And the first few people, they get to build it with me. Yes. So I just think that is super, super cool. Um, so I want to do a quick question before we wrap up. And I always say, what would you ask your 15 year old self, right? Like when we think about our teenage self, the things that we're doing, what would you ask that person? And maybe you don't ask them something. What would you say to your 15 year old self in this moment? And I'll let you think about it. Um, while you're thinking, I will go ahead and, and share what I would say to my 15 year old self. So for my 15 year old self, um, Actually, at 14, I was lying on applications so I could work. I was being grown very early, working, walking around like I was a grown woman doing grown woman things when really at 14, 15, 16, that is when we are so impressionable and we have to just soak up where we are and have fun. 
So I would tell my 15 year old self to pause, slow down and enjoy being a kid, right? Now in hindsight, I am glad that I was so uh, motivated, so energetic and so ready, ready to kill it. Cause now look what I've been able to, to birth. However, it's always a fine line. And so what that taught me was to make sure that my daughter never had to hurry up and want to work because she wanted to make money, right? And what happens for us is the reason why we're able to do and think the way that we do now. So I know I'm like talking back and forth in one sense, I would say slow down, but I'm also glad that I did everything that I did because that's how I was able to, to become the woman that I am now. Yeah, I love that. And I actually want to mirror the same thing um, because when I was 15, I went through a pretty traumatic experience and you, those listening, stay tuned. If a book's going to come out about that too. But I would say to my 15-year-old self, and it's ironic because I have a 15-year-old daughter too, mm -hmm. that the situation didn't happen to you, it happened for you. Right. And the reason why I say that is because that situation started my experience of learning my worth. And like you, I, when I went through it, I went through different phases. I started questioning myself and who I was and what I wanted to do. But in the back of my mind, I still persevered because I'm like, you know, that didn't, that happened, but I'm going to push it back. You yeah. know, and it wasn't until 2021 that I actually took the time. What that's, I'm not even going to try to calculate that, but <laughs> you 15 into 2021. So, um, that I actually took the steps to get therapy, to get healing. And that's what, again, everything that happened, that's how my, my business was founded. Mm. I never knew, you know, I never set out, oh, I'm going to start a business and teach women about their worth. Because I didn't know that was an issue for me. But mm -hmm. it defined, that situation defined my worth. The other situations up until this point defined my worth. Mm -hmm. But like I said, I mean, I'm just, I wouldn't, it's going to sound crazy, but I wouldn't, I don't regret anything I've gone through. Right. Because it's made me to who I am. I didn't, I'm just grateful for that. I didn't give up on myself. Amen. That I, I didn't sit, you know, get so focused on the, the, the glass being half empty instead of looked at, always looked at it as half full That's to right. push through it. You know, my blessings were when I had my children, when we, we thugged it out, you know, in that situation for three years, you know, one thing I can say, my children have seen me evolve. You know, mm -hmm. one of my biggest goals is that by the time I'm 40, I'm going to become a multimillionaire. My children now articulate that to me, but Ooh. they've also, once they see that side of, of, of their life too, but they also remember that we had it where we didn't have this. Right. And it's making them because, you know, I could have easily been a millionaire at 25, but what type of child would I have raised? Mm -hmm. you know? So it would have been a total different type of trajectory. Let's but go. my kids are always going to remember this, just like your daughter saw the hustle in you. And now she's using this at, in her life. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my kids are going to do the same. And I'm grateful for that because it's going to make them better. I love that. You spoke on so many huge things, but we are in alignment. Like I wouldn't change any of it either. And I always say, you know, there is even a book called what happened to you. And I reframe that all the time. It's what happened for you because at the end of the day, we are not victims. We are victors. And when you forgive and you release all of that junk, it's literally freeing you so you can move the mental blocks and thrive in life and in business. So Jasmine, before we wrap up, I want you to share with everybody where they can find you on social, um, your website, things of that nature. And if you have anything coming up on the horizon, how they can get tapped in. 
thank you again so much for allowing me this opportunity. If I could just say one thing, um, just to anybody listening, I remember when I first met Lashana, she's had this podcast as long as I've known her, probably even longer. And I remember saying one day, I'm going to get enough confidence in myself to speak on it. Aww. And that says a lot, you know, just the, the journey of working with her. I've seen the shift in my confidence. She's seen the shift in my confidence. Other people in our in the community have they've seen that too. But you gotta believe, you gotta have faith in yourself and trust that every little thing that you're doing now that's positive is going to pay off in the end. Mm -hmm. And so you guys, again, I thank you for listening to me. You can find me on everything social media, the worth coach. You can find me on my website, www.dworthcoach.com. And also go take a look at my program, Worth University. That's www.worthuniversity.co. And I'm hosting for the first quarter, so depending on when you're listening, um, the first quarter I'm doing live orientations. But if you do miss it, there will be a link for you where you can listen to the orientation um, a replay of the orientation so we're always you know welcoming you with open arms you can try it out see if this is something that you want to be a part of you know try before you buy mm. but i believe once you once you come you're going to stick around so i'm excited about my journey i'm excited about everything Lashana's doing and those listening i'm excited about your journey too so please connect with me social media the worth coach let me know any way that i can help you Amazing. And Jasmine, before we roll up out of here, what is one word that would describe your experience on the Bay Balance Above Everything podcast? Exceptional. Hey, <laughs> awesome. For me, it would be transparency. Even though this was like a quick snippet of our conversation, right? We didn't go in we didn't go ham for hours, but honestly, it doesn't take that. It literally takes like-minded individuals to connect and converse and make magic. So I literally would say transparency. Um, you have been a pleasure to work with. We're still connected. And I'm so excited for what you're bringing into the marketplace because it's definitely needed. Um, for those who are listening, make sure to check out all the information below in the description. Get tapped in with Jasmine. If anything resonates, of course, go to misswestcreativecoach.com to get connected to all of my programs and information and resources. And we'll see you next time on the Bay Podcast. Bye, y'all.